Okay, I have been putting off this video for quite some time for several reasons. Um, one, I've just basically been burying the trauma of my birthing story deep within my c-section scar um, but also i just felt like i haven't had a moment to really properly sit down and do this baby is asleep i will be checking the monitor uh so bear with me but uh, you guys have been asking about this and i feel like the time has finally come i am ready to tell the story of my baby's birth if you didn't know i had a baby girl august 5th of this year 2023 and for me it was was pretty traumatic this is not meant to scare anyone it's also not meant to like diminish anyone else's story I'm sure there are far worse stories out there um, most definitely I am very lucky my baby is happy and healthy and beautiful and wonderful and I am here to tell the story uh, this is just my own personal journey I don't want to scare anyone that is about to have their baby so if you aren't looking to hear the reality of my situation skip this video but if you um, have been curious about my journey um, into bringing my baby into uh, this world. Um, that's what we're here to do today. I've been putting off this video because um, one, I haven't had a moment to properly sit down and do this, but two, I haven't fully processed um, the experience. It was really difficult and I am currently in therapy working through it. And one of the things my therapist suggested was that I tell the story. So I'm here to tell the story. But before I do that, speaking of therapy, I wanted to talk about today's sponsor and that is BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a online platform that is here to give you accessible therapy. It's incredible. I have signed up personally. So I am here to tell you that I am currently on the platform and I think that it's brilliant. It gives you the ability not only to find a therapist that suits you regardless of where you are in the country, but also regardless of having to go through your insurance because the options on there are accessible. Also, if you don't like your therapist, you can switch. And let me tell you, I ended up switching, not because I didn't like my therapist, but because my the first therapist that I was um, matched with, their schedule just like didn't fit my schedule. And so then it kicked me over uh, and found me another therapist and it's really quite simple all you do is you go online and if you use my link I'll leave it down below uh, it's betterhelp.com slash leasebug not only does it help support my channel but it gives you 10% off you go on there and you fill out a questionnaire it's pretty simple I love a questionnaire I would say I would even venture to say it's fun um, you fill it out and then it matches you with your therapist and like I said you can uh, rematch if if that person it doesn't suit your needs and then you can get your healing journey underway whether it be because you need to talk about your anxiety or maybe your medical trauma or you're just a human in this world trying to navigate it is a rough time out there I can't express how much therapy has helped and continues to help me and how wonderful I think this service is so again if you visit betterhelp.com slash you can get 10% off your first month and it helps my channel um, help me help you help me help you help you you get the point thank you BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video um, and for sponsoring my my life my mental health uh, as I move forward through um, each challenge and to say that this was a challenge would be an understatement so let me roll back a little bit I guess I didn't really plan this out as to how I was gonna tell a story I'm just gonna kind of like blurt it out um, I also like to mention that like this was all from my point of view and when you're in labor <laughs> and when you're going through this kind of stuff like your point of view might be a little bit skewed because you're so drugged out you're so in pain you're so this so that so like you know some of my views and opinions on some of the staff that I worked with and some of the the people that came through might like be a little bit clouded and in my head feel different than it actually was so again all this is my point of view but this is how I processed it and this is how I saw it and this is how I'm feeling it and this is how I'm trying to like move through so I had a really rather easy pregnancy considering that I'm 40 years old and this was my first pregnancy I got pregnant very very quickly within the first try really well we tried once the month prior but we did the math wrong and so we were trying on the wrong week of my ovulation so technically speaking I like to think we tried we we got it on the first try um, and the pregnancy you guys watch my journey was like pretty easy the whole way through um, I mean I was like emotional and it was definitely like 
an emotional experience and physically I felt um, a little bit like I couldn't do everything I wanted to do but that's of, of course obvious because I was carrying a child uh, but I you know was pretty healthy the whole way along the only thing like now in retrospect is that I was getting dizzy a lot and I was out of breath a lot and I thought that was just part of it and I did express that to my doctors but like no one really batted an eye at that and now when I think back to this whole heart failure thing which is like a conversation for another day if we want to talk about that um I think there were signs of pre or parent let's see I had postpartum cardiomyopathy but I think that there were signs of pre pre parent 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 name there's a name for it that comes before uh, pregnancy like during or sorry during the pregnancy before the baby um arrives anyways but overall all things considered it was like a very easy pregnancy um i was healthy the baby was healthy and everything was like kind of on target we really didn't have any issues along the way like we met all of the checkpoints and um everything was pretty smooth so um coming up to the 40th week the doctor was like hey we want to induce if the baby doesn't come like you know within that week prior within the 39th week if you don't go into labor on your own like we really want to induce um their theory was that for um someone of my age um the chances of a stillbirth after week 40 after the due date are a lot higher um and so to avoid that their whole theory was like we should induce I had this intuition that I shouldn't induce. I didn't want to do it. Maybe it was an intuition or maybe it was just like, oh, that sounds scary and awful and I don't want to have to do that. Like I want it to be a lot more natural. And now in retrospect, by the way, like I feel like in my heart of hearts, I should have like had a doula and done like a weird, been like the weird hippie home birth in a bathtub thing. Anyways, so we had scheduled it for like a few days prior to when we actually ended up doing it and i was like can we just push this a few more a few more days and so they pushed it a few more days because like i had that feeling but as i was approaching that 40th week my back was really 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 hurting me like my lower back to the point where i was like so uncomfortable and i was going I think I went to like a acupuncturist and a chiropractor. I was like doing all these things and I couldn't like the pain wouldn't go out of like my lower back. And one of the acupuncturists was actually like, Hey, this might be a sign of like, you might be in like pre labor and you're laboring in your back and um, which comes into play later. So anyways, um, you know, it got to the point where I was like, I'm so uncomfortable. And the only way to really do this without getting induced is that we would have to go get checked by the doctor like literally every single day just to make sure baby was healthy and doing okay in there and our doctor in the hospital that we chose is really far away um, from our house so we did this because i had a friend that works in the office and she was kind of our advocate along the way and so for us it made sense um but that drive and that travel being almost 40 weeks pregnant was starting to get really really intense and it was getting to the point where like I was ready like I, I was ready to get this baby out my body was starting to really really hurt so we had the induction set on her due date which was the third mind you she didn't come to the fifth so that's where the story is going and this is a story so get some popcorn um so we were set to have her on the third um we went in at 10 a.m and i was nervous because i don't like medical stuff and like the thought of like going into a hot like it all like hit me like I knew at some point this baby was gonna have to come and I was gonna have to conquer this but like I would kind of put it out of my mind until like very close up to the actual birth because the thought of it was all very overwhelming for me maybe I made a mistake in that maybe I should have learned a little bit more about this whole process so I could have been an more of an advocate for myself we did take like the two birthing classes from the hospital and so we did have like a sense of vocabulary and like a, 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 a sense of what was to come but I guess I never really took any like birthing classes in terms of like learning how to like breathe properly through it and all that stuff and I guess maybe in retrospect I kind of regret that anyways sorry keep looking at the monitor so 
we pack up and it's like, okay, we're like going over to the hospital, like to have this baby. My mom comes over, she takes the dog, we hug, we kiss. Jeff and I are listening to like fun music on the way there. It was like, I, in my mind, sorry, I should back up a second. In my mind, I really wanted to labor at home. I wanted my water to break. I did all the things, uh, all the wives tales. You guys were there on that journey. You can revisit those videos. Like I did all that stuff and it didn't work. And like, so I really wanted that. Um, but this was like the, this was like where, the alternative, like we had to do this. So it was very different than we had, had pictured. And I think that's one thing that I learned is like, there was no planning. Like what is it like the saying, like, you make God, you make plans and God laughs or something. Like I had this image of like my water breaking and I was gonna labor at home and I was gonna be in the bath and then we would go down, we would drive down and it would be chaotic but fun. And like, it wasn't like that. Um, we got dressed and we got in the car and like there was something really nice about that. We kind of just like made the drive and it wasn't as stressful. I was nervous, but it wasn't like, go, go, go. Which like, I kind of wish we could have experienced. Anyways, we get there, we park, we, go in, everything's like really calm. Now, at this hospital, maybe this is stupid and I've mentioned this before, but at this hospital, I heard when you go in, you should ask for a room with a view, a room with a window. There's only one room there that doesn't have a window. Now this might seem really silly, but listen, I went on the third and came out with a baby on the fifth. To be in a room that long without windows is horrendous we got the one room without the window. I don't know if it's because we were late or like what, because of course we were late because we were always late to everything. Like we, or they were busy or whatever, but we got the one room without windows, which was nuts because we were in there for so long. It was like a weird time warp. Like we felt like we were in Vegas. Like we, like you didn't know when the sun was going up and going down and it really could drive a person nuts. So picture that, like that was just like, a detail that like first of all it made me feel really claustrophobic and second of all like again like time was like it was like kind of a bizarre experience i came to find out that my friend tracy ended up delivering in that room as well um but it was with her second son so she wasn't in there that long which she called it the vegas room as well because it's like and in vegas like there's no windows and you don't know what time it is and they do that on purpose so you spend all night in the casinos so Anyways, we get into this um, room. Oh my God, I suddenly got like so self-conscious that I'm telling this full story, um, but you're here, right? You clicked on this, you wanna watch this. Huh. Okay, um, it's like so intimate too that I'm like, should I be sharing this? But like, I, that's what I do. Okay, um, and I'm sure I'm gonna miss details, but we get into the room and everyone's really, really nice. They hook me up to an IV and again, I don't like any of this medical stuff, but I still have the IV mark. Actually, I think this one was from when I went back for the um, for the heart failure. So um, everyone was really nice, but they hooked me up to an IV and we're kind of getting situated and they're like, okay, we're gonna start the induction. And I think if I am correct, they start by putting you on Pitocin and Pitocin is supposed to like get get your body to dilate. And so we start with that and I think I start to labor and Jeff would have to correct me because again, it was all su such a time warp, but like, I think I start to feel some contractions, but they're like manageable and I'm like, oh, whoa, this is, this is what this is. Okay. Whoa. Um, so that continues to go on and we come to realize that I'm like not dilating like at all. Like my body is like, nah, we're like not interested in having like this baby, like at all, like she wants to hang in there like let her hang in there and they're like okay well we'll keep like doing the pitocin so this goes on for quite some time i feel like we got there at 10 a.m and now we're into like late in the evening i remember we had a meal so we got to order in food because i wasn't on any heavy drugs yet so we have like our final meal that night um, and then they come to check me and the exams to check if you're dilated are very, very painful. It is like getting a pap smear to the umph degree. It's called a, is it called a vaginal check? Ugh, my brain. Basically they like get up in there to see if you have dilated and if there's any opening at all. And it's really painful. And so, um, a pelvic exam. It's just, it sounds, 
it it feels just as awful as it sounds. So um, my doctor comes, I think before she like finishes her shift for the night, she comes and it's like, nah, we're gonna need to put in a balloon. The balloon is exactly what it sounds like. They literally like put this like long, like kind of stick thing in and then they pump up a balloon inside you and that's the idea is to, like help you dilate even more. It's super primitive, it's, it's just like, gross <laughs> but like that's how they do it but to be able to get the balloon in there they have to have you or your cervix open just enough to get that like thing in there so the whole thing was like well we got to get you dilated enough to get the cervix or to get your cervix to put the balloon in so the whole like middle of the night was dedicated to this idea of getting the balloon in but everyone there was like, the balloon part is the most painful part of this whole process. And I don't know why they told me that. I guess they were trying to be honest, but like that scared the living daylights out of me because the pelvic exam was like painful enough. So they're like, well, we can give you fentanyl. And I was like, I do not want to do that. Like I, like they're like, it's, it's totally safe. Like it's fine, it won't like affect the baby at all. And I was like, I really don't wanna do that. Let's just see if like I can dilate. So they keep giving me the Pitocin and the night's going on and these checks just keep happening. These pelvic checks, they come in every, I wanna say like every four hours. And like I said, it was like in the middle of the night at this point. So, and they're really painful and I'm dreading them on top of the fact that now I'm starting to feel some contractions. So, you know, everything's starting to get uncomfortable, but I'm like, okay, I can handle this. Well, come like, I want to say it was like two or three in the morning, this girl comes into the room. She's like, we're going to do the pelvic exam. And I thought she was like, I don't know. I thought she, I don't even, I was like, I looked at her and I was like, she's not a doctor. Like what? Like, who is this? And she seemed really like, like timid and like not confident. And it was like kind of bizarre. And I was like, oh, okay. I thought maybe she was like a student and she was going to go get the doctor. And she's like, I'm doing it. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? She's like, I'm going to do the pelvic exam okay and i should have known like to ask like hey can we wait or can i wait till my doctor comes back in the morning like that was my first sign i like just had a weird feeling about it and that's what i'm trying to like ultimately tell you if you are about to go into labor or in any situation if you're in a medical situation you need to be your own advocate if you have a weird feeling about something speak up do not like feel like you need to be polite and like this was the first moment where I was like, I need to learn not to just like say yes to everything when it comes to my health. And as the story goes on and as like next time I talk about like the heart stuff, I learned to be my own advocate and to speak up. And that's like the silver lining here besides my beautiful child who is sleeping. Um, anyways, so she does the exam. That's very painful. And she says, I'm not sure if we can get the balloon in there. Hard to say. Let me get my colleague. He's the pro. He'll come in and do it. As if she was just like basically doing this for the first time, which I come to learn she probably was because she was a student. She was a resident there, which is not to say like res some of the residents we met were awesome, but like it was like she basically just wanted to like practice on me knowing full well that she wasn't going to be able to achieve what needed to be achieved, which was to figure out. Um, basically, they wanted to go in this is gross. Uh, they wanted to go in and like open like my cervix up with their finger to then be able to get the balloon in. And she knew going in that she wouldn't be able to do it, but she did the exam anyways. Okay, fine. We can deal with that. In comes, and now we're into like the third hour and I just went through this painful experience and in comes this other guy, like probably like 20 minutes later. And he was so jovial for a three o'clock in the morning person. And at this point I'm in a lot of pain now and I'm upset and I'm sad. And like, I'm like, Oh my God, this is going forever. Like this isn't feeling right. At that point I should have been like, we need to wait. I don't need to do a back to back pelvic exam, like literally back to back. But again, I, I, I looked at him and I was like, do we really need to do this? He's like, well, the sooner we get this balloon in the better, which mind you, yes, correct. But I still should have been like, give me another hour. Like I don't need to do back to back. But again, I didn't know. And I was putting my trust in these people I have never met before. <sighs> this part makes me just like so angry. I'm just like warning, like this involves like lady parts and like 
people getting in there and I know it was a medical situation and I know this is how babies are like made but I was so angry by this so I should have spoke up and I should have said no but this man comes in he's like well they call me what did they call it? like Jack Skellington because my fingers are long and skinny and like at the time we're like ha ha like this guy's funny at least but like in theory I'm like that's gross first and foremost and this is my body and like I don't like this and 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 this feels invasive so he he's like I can make it happen I can make it happen and we're like okay get the damn balloon in like we want to get this baby out of here so he proceeds to do the thing and it's very 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 painful and he's trying to also like get it done but he's also like trying to prove that he is the best person uh for the job you know he's like I don't usually get to do this because I'm like on the top and so I'm like kind of overseeing everyone but like I'm excited to do this like kind of thing and like anyways um he gets in there and he's trying really hard to like help get some space to get the balloon in but he can't do it and I'm in so much pain now because I've done these back to back. Oh my God, her eyes are open. Will she go back to sleep? Hard to say. Um, anyways, he can't, anyways, he can't do it. So we have failed. The balloon isn't in and I'm like enough. I'm waiting for my doctor to come in the morning. She comes before her shift at the OBG. Um, the hospital's like connected to where she works. Cliffhanger, let me go put the passy in baby's mouth. Be right back. I forgot to mention, after he does this exam, I'm basically like, this feels very violated. Like, I feel very violated. Um, and he was really nice and he apologized. Um, I just felt like I was being used as, like, a test or something. I don't know. I know their intentions were to get that balloon in and get this baby out safely and, health, you know, healthily, healthily. Um, but um i also do feel like there was some lack of like compassion or like a lack of like understanding that like this is my body and i'm a woman and like um this hurts and this is uncomfortable and this is just, just wasn't feeling right and like i cried a lot and i feel like i don't know maybe i was just looked at as kind of like a crazy person and Again, this is all skewed from my weird opinion, um, being that I was like, you know, so out of it at this point, but yeah, anyways, come the morning and my doctor was like, we gotta just get this in. And I knew that I trusted her the most to do this and that she like knew me and that she cared for me and that she um, respected me and my body and my choices. But she was basically like, to get this in, you should do the fentanyl. Like, it's the only way you're gonna be able to get this in or we can get this baby out. So I did the fentanyl and, um, you know, they give you like such a small amount and it's supposed to like leave your body quickly. And I was really nervous about it because they said you could get really dizzy on it. And that's like one of my biggest fears. Um, I hate being dizzy. I used to get vertigo and it just is like so triggering to me. Um, and I also obviously didn't want it to affect the baby and she swore up and down that it wouldn't. So they give it to me and I don't really remember but the balloon gets in and we have achieved what we needed to achieve. So they continue with the Pitocin and the balloon and the idea is that the balloon, um, they'll come back and check it. Like they basically will come and pull it after a while and once it like fully pulls out like a tampon, um, it means that you have dilated the amount that you are supposed to dilate and then hopefully from there your body like continues to take on. Well, as luck would have it, my body was not having it and my body was not doing anything. They would come and they would check and they would pull on it, which is like so uncomfortable and weird and like nothing would happen. So they started to do this thing where they would like weigh it down. I can't remember what they put at the end of it, but basically like trying to like mimic more gravity so that it would like whatever. It was so gross. So um, now we're into the next day. Uh, well into the next day and I am definitely definitely feeling the contractions so I have the balloon in I'm feeling the contractions I've done the fentanyl and now I'm like I need the epidural like this hurts like I am ready like let's do this thing and at that point I wasn't even scared because I've done all this other scary stuff and they're like it's not it's nowhere near as painful as getting the balloon put in um you just need to like stay really still so at that point I'm so out of it I'm so like I'm just like another 
on another planet and so they come in to do the epidural which is like a big to do they like lift you up and they put this thing on your head and maybe I have some pictures I could share and Jeff is standing in front of me and Jeff is fantastic by the way this whole time he is just like <laughs> All I needed him to do was like basically like put his face up to my face so I was distracted whenever I was doing like any sort of like medical like thing um and he would do that and he would talk to me really close and it made me feel like safe and I'm so grateful for for him especially in this whole situation that he took um such precious care of me and I think he was scared out of his mind <coughs> excuse me I think he was scared out of his mind too because he had never seen me in so much pain um, before when I was like laboring, um, before the epidural. He was like, I thought you were like kind of faking it. And then I realized you weren't because it was like crazy. Like I was just like, ah, ah. And mind you, going back to this like back thing, I was in fact laboring the whole thing in my back. So all the pain was like this extreme pain on my lower left backside, like right above my butt, like literally my lower back on the left side all the pain was there that's where the contractions were happening so it was like the worst back pain i have ever felt in my entire life i i, I that's just like i have no other way of explaining it and she's up cliffhanger i'll be back i have a memory um while i was getting the epidural in they like lift you up really high and you have to like do this back thing and so it, it was like kind of like a surreal experience and i felt very like lion king like i felt like they were like lifting me up and there was a john mayer song playing and i remember like singing along and like it was just like a very like out of body experience anyways the epidural goes in and i do feel better at first so they get like the peanut out and oh okay so baby it turns out baby was facing down but she was facing upwards like sunny side up is what they call it and so they wanted to do all this like um movement with me to see if we can get her to flip naturally because it would be easier to get her out that way so they were trying to do all this um i think it was called spinning with me um and that was like using this ball and moving me in certain directions also with the epidural they need to keep you moving to keep the um drug basically moving through your body well as it turns out I was laying on my right side and anytime I would turn to my left, the baby's heart rate would drop um, and it would drop significantly and it was really scary. And so they were like, you have to stay on your right, on your right side. So I was on my right side, I think for like, I think we, it ended up being like eight hours or something like crazy um, in so much pain because the epidural wasn't working because it wasn't moving through my body. So now I'm laboring basically without drugs, but I can't move. So I can't do the movements that need to be done to like get yourself through labor. So I'm basically just laying there in pain. And meanwhile, the balloon isn't working and I'm not dilating. We are now into like, you know, 20, way past 24 hours. Um, at this point, you're probably asking, why wouldn't you just get a C-section? And the answer is, I don't know. And I didn't know to ask. And like, they were trying so hard and they were trying to be advocates for me to like have this vaginal birth, but like, it just like clearly wasn't happening. And they feel like that mistake was made at that point. Like it should have just been like, let's just get this baby out. But instead we're like, we'll keep trying. So finally they were actually able to get the balloon out. And when they did that, they noticed that I had dilated, but I had only dilated like the minimal amount that that balloon was supposed to get you to dilate. Sorry, I have to check. We moved her to a, the swing and I can't hear her now. Okay, hours later, but the story continues. So we left off i got the epidural but i couldn't like move so i was all on one side and it wasn't taking so i was basically laboring like i said pain in the back this whole thing balloon finally comes out somewhere along the line and i can't remember now i'd have to ask jeff my blood pressure drops significantly mind you my blood pressure in general is runs very low and later on with the whole like heart thing my blood pressure is like super low and it's a whole issue but at this point in time my blood dress pressure drops so low that everyone's very concerned and they need to give me essentially what is like a speed to pick it everything up and get my blood pressure up Again, I don't have the voice to be like, I don't really want to do that. Like I run naturally low. And I did, I do know that I like spoke up and was like, Hey, my blood pressure is normally low, but, um, they administered 
this drug and I don't know what it is. Jeff said it was like equivalent to like what back in the day, like a diet pill was made of that they ended up taking off the market because it was essentially speed. They pump this into, I think my IV. And when I tell you out of all the things that happened to me along the way, including the heart failure, I thought I was dying when they put this in me. I remember so specifically looking straight in the eyes of the doctor that administered this into me and going, like I couldn't breathe. It felt like my throat was closing and this was like it. I don't know if I was having a bad reaction to it or if I just like was mistaking the feeling of like heart rate. I'm not exactly sure, but like, it was one of the scariest moments of my life. And um, later on, I think it was like postpartum, they wanted to give me the drug again. And I was like, absolutely not like anything but that. It was such a horrifying experience. So at this point now I've had an epidural for <clears throat> over, uh, I mean, so let's see, was it as long as 24 hours? It was, no, they can't give you an epidural that long, but it was like 12 hours. It was a long time. So I had the epidural, I had had the fentanyl, I had this crazy other drug, and I had the Pitocin. So my body is filled with so much stuff. Um, and I'm a small human, I don't take any drugs, like I wouldn't even take a Tylenol during my pregnancy. So I suddenly went from zero to 100. So now we're into our, coming up to our third day, and finally, finally it was like my doctor and my friend who was my advocate for me was like it's enough already like let's go ahead and do the c-section and they all acted like it was like this huge big defeat and looking back i'm like dude we should have just done the c-section like i mentioned a day earlier and there's no defeat in a c-section like i get it women want to have this vaginal birth and they want to do it that way um and i understand that doing a c-section it's a way bigger uh surgery you were essentially doing stomach surgery so like i know that they wanted to avoid that like there were so many reasons why we waited and waited and waited um but i do feel like it has such a bad rep and i wish that we would have just made that decision way earlier but their whole thing was like let's do it now before it becomes an emergency before the baby's heart rate drops so low or your blood pressure drops so low like let's do it now when we're in this like contained sort of scenario so this is now like two full days past when we got in um i think i believe annie was born at oh god 10 30 or 11 30 something like that so it was like you know she went in on the third and she came out on the fifth so we're like, okay, we're going to do the C-section. At this point, I'm exhausted. My back is killing me. I'm in so much pain. And I'm like, this is the right choice. But I'm also terrified. I'm so, so, so scared because now I know I'm officially going into surgery. So, uh, but back up for a second because the thought of actually pushing now after doing two days of laboring basically without any drugs, I mean all the drugs, but nothing really taking, I'm like, I, I actually don't think I have the energy to push. So yes, let's do the C-section. But they say, okay, you're gonna go in for prep, but Jeff can't go in with you. He'll come in for the actual surgery, but for the prep, you have to go along, alone. And um, I'm terrified because Jeff has been by my side this whole time with his face literally in my face and it's the only way that I'm surviving. So I'm like, okay, I'll be brave. They put him in the whole suit and he's sitting outside and he's waiting. And they bring me into the surgery room and there's all these voices and all these lights and um, I'm trying to remain calm and there's music going and you know, everyone's just like chit chatting. Like it's just another day at the office for these people. And again, mind you, these people are wonderful, beautiful humans, but like in my mind, I'm freaking out and everyone's just like, how was your weekend, you know? Um, and so finally Jeff gets to come in and I'm so happy. And she starts, uh, oh, they do this like whole epidural test and they're like testing my leg. Can you feel this? Can you feel this? Can you feel that? And I can feel, oh, oh, how I can feel. And I definitely can feel on the side that my body wasn't able to get the epidural previously. Finally, we get to a point where I'm like, okay, I can't feel. She starts the surgery. And at this point, to be fair to everyone in the room, 
I think I'm ultimately just feeling the tugging, which they say you're going to feel. Like when I got my um, my big cyst out of my back, I made a video about it. Um, I could feel like the tugging of it, but it wasn't hurting. I could just feel it. So in my mind, I knew it was happening. And I think ultimately, now looking back, that's probably what was happening was like I could feel the doctor starting the surgery. Um, but it wasn't hurting, but I was so exhausted and so freaked out at this point that I started shouting the doctor's name saying like, I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. And then everything sort of just went black and the rest of the surgery was like in sort of weird. I don't know if you've ever been like blackout drunk. It's kind of like that. Like everything was kind of in like these weird snapshots where like I can kind of remember moments, um, but not really. At one point I they pulled out Annie and I think I got to like touch her foot. I have pictures of her laying on my chest, but I have like no memories of that. I have a memory of being like, we need to get a picture of the doctor and all of us together, which is like a really weird thing. Why I felt like the need to do that. I think I just had in my memory that like, this is how this is supposed to go. Baby comes out, baby's on chest, you connect with baby. M Mom and dad and baby embrace, doctor comes in, we take a picture. Like I had all these images of like what this birthing process was supposed to be like. But the truth of the matter is I wasn't present for any of it because after I started screaming for the doctor, telling her that I could feel, they gave me more fentanyl and then they gave me, um, oh, what's the drug? It's the drug that like Michael Jackson took and eventually like overtook and died on um, tryptophil, tryptophil. Trump to fill, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and so I was like completely like just drugged out for the birth of my child. <sighs> so they pulled her out and Jeff said that she was a little bit blue. So they like swifted her away and just made sure she was okay. And she totally was okay. And then he got to hold her and there's some gorgeous pictures of her like looking right at him she was like wide and wide-eyed and alert right away um he didn't cut the cord because he was so scared for me so he, he was with me during that part um and I guess they did put her on my chest but like I said I have like no memory of that so um you know when I jump jumping ahead when I talk about my postpartum a lot of it was that I didn't get that like initial bonding that everyone says you're gonna have because I was so out of it next thing I know we're like in the postpartum um wing in our room and like again it's all in like bits and pieces um but Annie was safe and I was stitched up and like in theory we thought everything was fine so we're in this like postpartum like um, room and they're like you're in this fancy room like some reason we got in some fancy room which ultimately didn't feel very fancy um, but I was so out of it for the next like two days um, and everyone was so confused I guess most people don't re react to medication like this strongly um, but like I'm a small human like I said and I'm not used to medication and so I was really pretty much out of it for the next Okay, I heard a sound and it was Jeff, not the baby. <laughs> I was like pretty out of it for the next um, two days. And so basically like the nurses and Jeff were doing all of like the work with Annie. And I was just trying to like come to essentially along with like dealing with the C-section. But um, I was just so out of it. And on top of that, my blood pressure had dropped again so significantly low. So everyone was like coming in and out and they were so upset by this. And like rightfully so, my blood pressure was really low. But like in my memory, everyone was like, would come in, like the nurses would come in and be like, your blood pressure, it's really low and like stress me out. And, be, and I was like, I don't know. Like I have no idea what's going on. I basically have no idea where I am. That's my child, but I have no connection to that child at this moment because it all happened so fast and I'm still like so drugged out. Like the whole thing was such like a surreal experience. Anyways, I ended up being in there for four nights um, because my blood pressure was so low. I was super dehydrated. Now I think back, like, I remember them coming in and being like, your urine, it's like so little and so dark, like we need to pump you with fluids. 
which in turn was probably the wrong thing to do because my heart wasn't able to pump out the fluids. So they were pumping in more fluids and I think this is probably that on top of the drugs what ended up leading to this heart failure, which was that if you watch my heart failure video, I like couldn't pump out all the fluids that were going in me. So if you see a picture of me going into um, delivery, I am a very normal weight for a pregnant woman. In fact, I barely gained any weight. I gained, I think for my, for I, like the lowest amount of weight help you should healthily healthily um gain i barely gained any weight basically like i've gained the right amount of weight for my size and for the baby but coming out of surgery and uh, c-section and coming out of the hospital i gained like a triple amount so i blew up like three times my size but jeff and i were in such just like haze that we didn't really notice it and we thought well maybe this is just normal but Anyway, sorry, I'm I'm now on a tangent. I'm going into the heart thing, which is like, I'm still trying to process that too. And like why they let me out of the hospital looking the way I did. Like I'm trying to explain, I was like three times the size I was as when I went in to deliver the baby. Anyways, um, so they were just basically pumping me with fluids and trying to get my blood pressure to go back up without pumping me with that medication because at that point I was like no I'm not taking that crazy medication that I felt like I was dying on um and then they could have released us on the third day but Annie was dropping weight beyond what she should be dropping babies always drop weight after they come out but she was dropping significantly more so we ended up staying four nights and then they released us and I remember putting on my clothes and like literally nothing fit like my shoes didn't fit my feet were like so big um that I ended up having to wear my shower shoes but even then I was like busting out and that's kind of when the story of my heart failure begins or at least we, we realized it began um but yeah that was sort of sorry I didn't tie this up properly but that was like the ending of um the birth story I had what they called a failed induction with an elected c-section because it was an emergency c-section because we were able to be like okay we're going to do it at this time and we don't need to like rush you in um and that's how my baby girl came to be the good news is she was able to come out beautiful and like they didn't have any trauma to her head or anything like that she um didn't have any jaundice she didn't like nothing she she came out perfectly perfect and she's beautiful and gorgeous and I love everything about her and I wouldn't take back a moment of it I just wish that I could have acted on my instincts I really feel like I wasn't I shouldn't have been induced and I know that they were doing like medically they were doing the right thing um, according to the book but like I just and I feel like I should have gotten that c-section earlier but I'm trying to work through not having regrets and again that's why I'm in therapy and again thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video because I am a huge advocate of really working through this stuff because life is challenging and life is crazy and especially these big monumental moments like giving birth um, always come with surprises and um, I mean this was like the exact opposite of what I thought was going to happen. But here we are and I want to be able to enjoy the rest of my journey as a mom and not just like sit here and um, regret things and be upset and angry. Like I feel all the feelings. I feel like I'm going through all the stages of grief with this. Like I'm just angry. I'm sad. I'm, um, what are the other stages of grief? <laughs> I'm all of them. Um, but I'm going to continue to work through it and, uh, yeah, this was so disjointed and I hope this all made sense and one full story came out of all of this. Um, it feels good to like share it and again, I don't want to scare anyone. Everyone's experience is different, but every mom that I talk to, it seems like everyone has like sort of their own crazy experience with birth. Like birth is like no joke. It is very human and this is what we are built to do, um, but it's also super traumatic on the body and with that the mind and the spirit and so um, I'm giving a lot of love and grace and kudos and um, respect to people who have had a baby um, and for those who choose not to I completely 
give you all the same love, respect, and kudos because um, this is this is next level, and I feel like um, I guess. I didn't really realize, or maybe I just like la 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 la, when my friends told me how hard it was for them. You don't really know until you're in it, but so much respect um, now for myself <laughs> and for um, those who have gone through this. So that is the story, the birthing story. The next chapter begins is the heart failure, which I've talked about um, a lot. Oh my God, I just saw. <laughs> saw Jeff's butt in the monitor and I was like what is that okay I gotta get going um thank you for being here for holding space for me for loving me for giving me support and I hope that this was something important to you in one way or another whether it was entertaining encouraging um loving whatever the case is uh you are not alone I support and love you and uh thanks for being here thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring this video and for providing accessible therapy to people everywhere oh my god you guys my battery died and now it's hours later and we've done another feed and now we're trying to get the baby back down <laughs> it's never ending um but description or link for better help is in the description below and in the bar right here thank you guys i love you thank you for listening if you got this far you are a gem and um i'm very lucky to have you on my side all right see you next time bye